title of this writing is Good Bad. Did you ever notice how words or phrases can have different meanings depending on how they're said? I've been musing about some of the words we hear and the different meanings they connote depending on their usage and delivery. For example, let's try these on for size. Good, bad, naughty, nice. Good and bad are childhood words we were weaned on. Good girl, bad boy, or vice versa. They're familiar to most of us. You can imagine how they change meaning depending on the situation. Let's pretend that you've given your boss three pieces of unwelcome business news, and then moments later you hit him with a fourth. His response is, oh good. How about naughty and nice? Naughty and nice have different meanings in the homeroom than they do on the honeymoon, and no one needs to spell that one out. So what's the larger point? Watch your language. Watch your delivery. Good and bad are really words that have lots of emotional baggage attached to them, and you'd be better served using synonyms you learned in high school as substitutes. Productive, counterproductive, useful, not useful, these are a few that come to mind. Dr. Dave Dobson taught us that good and bad are words we were toilet trained with, and even though we use and perceive these words in different contexts as adults, there's still a part of us that harkens back to that trying period when we hear those words. Dave called it a transderivational search. Our mind is looking for all the references we have for any word when we hear it. It happens at mind-numbing speed, but all contexts are considered. The adult words we learn later in life have less references attached and are more precisely tied to a meaning. Just compute these two sentences. That's good information. That's productive information. On the surface, they may appear as the same thing. Below decks? There's a lot more going on, and the one with more references is more ambiguous in its meaning than the other. Side note, regarding delivery, sarcasm is like a spice. It can accent a meal or ruin it. If sarcasm is your go-to delivery, you'll wear on people quicker than the brownie plate disappeared on the set of The Biggest Loser. Here's a pro tip. Check your language twice. We can all be more precise and less biting with our words. It just takes a tiny bit of noticing. All the best, John.